beautiful safe. She comes here up any minute. Mister, we are asking support from our Sheikh, Sahib al Saif, Sheikh Abdul Kamil Kabir's Ya Rabbani, to send us something. Eh? Something that is going to be of benefit to us, knowledge that is going to be benefiting us, knowledge that is fresh and alive, knowledge that will keep us fresh and alive, not knowledge that is going to make us to become dead and bored. You understand? So many knowledges there like that. You go to every university, you go to so many scholarly gathering, they're like that. You go to so many maulids, they're also like that. Everyone is just so dead and just uh, 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 like this. They're not fresh, alive, understanding, being awake, putting everything together. Seeing what has happened, seeing what is happening now, and understanding what is going to come. That you have to have, hold on to a live wire. You see anyone holding on to a live wire and they're dead? The, 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 like this? No. You see, hold on to a live wire, you are... Even if you're calm, you're seeing they're calm because you're struggling to remain calm because the power is coming and you cannot just run with it also. You have to give, like Chef, and you see his YouTube videos now or any kind of recording, he is still fresh, he's still alive. Huh? That is just a reflection of him. That's not him, you know it's not him, but there's so much life. Oh, oh. those ones, if they're fresh and alive on the earth, imagine what they are under. How much more fresh and how much more alive they must be. So the Murits, that's why he gets very upset. He says, you come to me with your dead faces, dead hearts. Hmm? Come at least with some fresh, freshness and some life, then he's going to give more. So we're asking from him, Alhamdulillah. He is our Shaykh. He is taking from Sultan al Awliya. He's taking from those oceans, giving it to us. Always has been. Always will be for us. We continue, inshallah. Like he continued, he didn't listen to no one. And he's just continuing, and Prophet is praising him. Sultan al is praising him. Allah is praising him. The angels are praising him. And what we want is for him to be happy with us. This is why we are continuing. He is the one who is the owner of this way, not us, not you and not me. He's going to make this way to continue, with or without us. Don't think, for you or me, we are the ones who's keeping things together. It doesn't matter. You think he's so concerned if there's one person, or ten people, or a thousand people, or ten thousand people? You think he's concerned about that? He's not concerned. He says, with or without you. Uh, showing now, he is more advanced. He's now to the other side. You understand? So, Ayyuz Billahi Bina Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We are asking him for his support and to send us something that is going to benefit us in this month of Mawlid, in this month of the birth of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, that Muslims, believers everywhere, they should be celebrating. What is the meaning of celebrating the birth of the Prophet ﷺ? It is giving thanks to Allah. Don't think celebrating his birthday is like celebrating your birthday. Huh? You cut one cake, you have presents, it's all about you. No. The birthday of the Prophet ﷺ is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ that no matter how much love anyone has for him in all these 1400 years no one has ever worshipped him no one has ever said that he is Allah Hasha Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluh he is a servant and he is a messenger so like the poet of the Burdaya Sharif is saying praise as much as you want as much as you want to praise him praise him As long as you don't pass your limits like the Nasranis, they do, praise him. Because however that you or me are we going to praise him, if we are praising him and celebrating his birthday every single day of our lives, praising him using all the words in all the languages, 
if all of mankind praises him, if all the angels praise him together, if all the jinns and all the other ones praise him together, you cannot come close to how Allah is praising him. So don't fear about praising him too much. Because Allah is saying, verily Allah and his angels, what? Send the salutations. Send the highest praisings to the Prophet. Oh, you who believe, this is not to Muslims. It is to the mu'mins, to those who believe. Oh, you who believe, praise him. I'm paraphrasing, praise him as much as you want, praise him. However much that we praise him cannot come close to Allah praising him one time. Just once. And in that ayat, there's no time limit. From pre-eternity up till post-eternity, Allah and his angels are always praising him. Do you think that mankind not praising him is going to bring him down from his station? Do you think if mankind and all of creation praise him, we're going to raise his station? No, because Allah has already praised him. He is not in need of anything else. It's not like people. One day they praise you, you're high up there, because you're relying on them. One day they curse at you and you fall down because you're relying on them. That's why our Shaykh is never relying on people, he's relying on his Lord. He doesn't care if people are praising or cursing at him. We don't care. So, the Holy Prophet wasalam, now, every day is his birthday. What is the meaning of celebrating his birthday, anyway? Don't look too far. Look at what the companions of the prophets, they did. How did they celebrate his birthday? What did they do? They sat, they remember Allah, and they thank Allah for sending him. And anything else that is connected to that, because this is not a farth, this is not an, um, how we say, a set form of obligation worship, let's say like that. So something that is not set form obligation worship, much as you want to put, it's okay. As long as within the levels, the boundaries of shariat. So you want to sit and you want to remember Allah. You want to sit, you're remembering Allah and thanking Allah for sending the Prophet. You want to do that and you want to serve food to people. Go ahead, do we? Because to serve food to people, it is a big sunnah, especially to feed the poor and the orphans. This is a very big blessing and this is a, very, is a lost tradition in the Mawlids too. What else are you doing? You're going to read Quran and you're going to send the blessings of that Quran that you have read to the Prophet wasalam, to all the Prophets, to his family. That is also within the ijma of the Ahli Sunnat, that is Ahli Sunnat teachings. That you can ask for the blessings, but you give the blessings to the one who had passed, to the Prophet, to your parents. This is the mercy of Allah. Don't listen to the squarehead Wahhabis that they're saying, you cannot recite even Fatiha to the dead, it's not going to do nothing to him. Because their hearts are dead, these ones. They have no more mercy. Because they don't love the Rahmat al Alameen. They don't love the owner of mercy. Allah is the creator of mercy and he has given that rahmat to the Prophet ﷺ. That's why he's known as the mercy to the universes. Oh, people are going to get very upset now. says, no, rahmat is Allah. Allah is the creator of rahmat. You have a problem with that? Yes, it is shirik. What if we say the Prophet is Rauf? Oh, there's even more shirik. What if we say the Prophet is Rahim? That's even more shirik. Oh, very good. You've just gone against the ayat in the Quran. Allah has given the title of Rauf and Rahim to the Prophet. These are the names of Allah. So obviously, it is not what is in the rights of Allah. If Allah is saying He is seeing, and you are saying you are seeing, are you now claiming that you are Allah? No. Allah is seeing, you are seeing. But never you're going to think the way that you see is the way that Allah sees. Never you're going to think the way that you see is the way that Allah sees. No. So people, they have lost their minds these days. 
So now, sitting and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sending that Prophet. Sending the Prophet as what? As a mercy. As a mercy. It is easy in the past 1,300 years to be celebrating Maulid because that mercy, it is still open. Because the uh, Khalifa, the Amir, the representative of that Prophet, which is the Khalifa, it is still there representing that mercy. So you're giving thanks for the mercy and you're counting the mercy that Allah has sent to the Ummah. Now there is no Khalifa. There is no one representing Rahmatullahi Alameen. How should we celebrate now this Rahmat? Should we just be sitting and celebrating and recounting how merciful the Prophet was? And how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, is, or are you going to become even more intelligent than that and to say, yes, the mercy is here, but we have, as a nation, we have betrayed that mercy. We have squandered that mercy. That mercy now, although Allah is sending, we are kicking it back because of our constant disobedience and because of our constant... Um, disbelief and constantly doing things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to not do. What is the thing that is constantly everyone is doing now? Declaring lordship. This is the time of tyranny. Jababira. That the Prophet said Allah is going to give a hundred years to tyrants. So how are you going to celebrate Maulid in the time of tyranny? This is the question. Of course, no one has answered that. No one has asked that. Maulid after Maulid, of course, these days, Maulid is just apologetics. Everyone is just going there and saying why we sh it is okay to have Maulid. And these are the things you have to say to the Wahhabis. It's not about celebrating the Prophet ﷺ. If it is about celebrating the Prophet ﷺ, then you're going to ask, what is it to celebrate about? Allah is already celebrating him. We are saying we're following him. If we are following him, there's a reason for celebration. If we are not following him, then that is the time for us to sit and for us, for us to beg for Allah's forgiveness and to ask the Prophet to forgive us because we are thanking that we have reached to this month. It's a holy month. It's a month of mercy. Yet, where is the nation now in this month of mercy? Where is this nation now in these years, in this close to 100 years that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has veiled the Hilafat that we as a nation, we say we don't need a Khalifa. We don't need a representative of that rahmat al alamin, that mercy to the universes. Are you going to celebrate now the mawlid of the Ahir Zaman? You're just going to sit and get happy and emotional that the, yeah, Prophet came, alayhi salatu wasalam, he's supposed to come and he did come to bring mercy. But where is that mercy now? There is no mercy in the individuals in their hearts anymore. There's no mercy in families. There's no mercy now in the communities. There's no mercy definitely in the whole ummah because everyone is saying me. At least in the past it was individual, maybe, because you don't have whole nations celebrating the self. Now we have all Muslim nations celebrating the self. What does that mean? All celebrating nationalism. How are you going to celebrate now that prophet who is a prophet of all of mankind if you're celebrating your own nationalism? How? It's impossible. One mouth is speaking this, the other mouth is speaking that. We are thanking Allah. We're asking Allah to bless the prophet. We're asking for his blessing. But we're asking... 
for his forgiveness and for us to wake up from this deep, deep ghaflat, this heedlessness of the Ahir Zaman, that as a nation, we don't even know. If you ask majority of the Muslims, do you know that we're living in the age of tyranny? Say, what? What tyranny? This is great, man. This is the age of social media. What are you talking about? It's not the age of tyranny. Say, no. Don't you see? Muslims are suffering. Ah, it's always been like that. It's great now. We all have... Uh, education, more money, things are looking up for Muslim nations. They're going to think, they're going to say, how many? They are saying now we've entered into the dark darkness. How do you celebrate the Mawlid in the dark darkness? Hmm. Prophet says, pull back in the Ahir Zaman. Pull back. Don't be in the populated area so much. Because although I have prayed to Allah not to punish my nation like he punished the nation of Nuh salam, with a flood, Allah will say, I will not punish your nation that way. But they are going to invent a fire that they are going to punish each other. Next time is going to be a flood of fire that is going to happen. Oh, you need to be a genius to understand this. Every country in the world, especially Muslim countries, rushing and racing to belong to that nuclear club, the club of shaitan, that they have the means to destroy this world completely. That all the energy and resources and everything is to belong to that nuclear club. It was completely out of the way. So in this Ahir Zaman, celebrate that. Prophet is saying, pull yourselves out, live a simple life, pull yourselves up to the mountain areas, he's saying specifically. There's going to be confusion everywhere. Don't go out trying to learn everything. Take whatever little knowledge that you have. Practice it. Be sincere. Don't go around trying to gain more and more and more and more knowledge. There's going to be confusion everywhere. And those who are telling people to gain more knowledge, more now tariqats have become centers of learning of not inner knowledge, outer knowledge. They're running for that only. There's no longer, now tariqat is supposed to be the anti-Zahir knowledge. In the old days, the sheikhs, <laughs> especially in the Naqshbandi sheikhs, Somebody is coming in, they say this one is a Hafiz, I say no, this one is ego is too high. Tell him he cannot even enter into the Dargah, I'm not going to take him as a Murid. Scholar comes, okay, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, okay. Take off everything that you have, that you're so proud of. Now you're going to learn how to be nothing. So many they failed. So many they failed. They cannot. We're seeing this over and over again, yet in the Ahir Zaman, people who are saying they're representing Tasawuf, they are pushing people to become scholars. Uh, mashallah. But did the Prophet wasalam, says, what did he say about the scholars of the Ahir Zaman? Did he say good things or bad things? Bad things he's saying. So I don't know where you're getting your knowledge from, what books you're reading and how you're going to. It doesn't matter anyway. No one is listening. So we're speaking. To those who want to listen, you don't want to listen, it's up to you. Leave it. Just say there's a crazy person, he doesn't know what he's saying. I'll take care. So yes, on top of remembering the greatness of the Prophet wasalam, balance it. Think, Ya Rasulullah wasalam, what you have left us with, we have betrayed it. We have squandered it. Forgive us. Help us. Send help to fix this. We are not happy with the situation of the world like this. We are not happy when the orphans, they are being tyrannized. As you were not happy when the orphans were tyrannized because you were an orphan. We are not happy when the poor they're being oppressed. We're not happy when those who don't have any power, 
they are under the cruelty of those who have power. This is what the Prophet was sent to this world and he was defending. So you think now everyone is celebrating, praising him. He is going to be happy when we're not even understanding the misery that is happening to his ummat right now. Don't just look at Muslims, look at non-Muslims. Non-Muslims are also part of his ummat. We should be happy. Somebody is saying, oh, tell Luqman Afandi to smile more. Saying because he is meaning it in a good way. Saying, tell him to smile more because when he smiles, he there's a beauty that he's giving. He's looking very serious. There's a time to smile and there's a time to be serious. If you mix up the two, you're going to be very big trouble. Hmm. You can pray. You can eat. But when it's time to, uh, <laughs> let's just say, this is a sohbat, but we're going to bring it down to very low level so everyone can understand. When it is time for you to do your dirty business in the toilet, there's not the time to eat. There's not the time to pray. There's a time for you to reflect. Yes. Not to be running around to reflect on how shameful, dirty creature you are. That you're still in this dirty, uh, shameful act now. If the angel of death comes and takes you right now, oh, what a dishonor it is going to be. That you're saying is stuff, oh, what a... Reminding you. You think you are so great? Oh, look, check it out. So there's a time and there's a place for everything. Celebration of the Mawlid of the Ahir Zaman. We're asking for more protection for us. Not just from physical things that's going to happen, but what is going to take our Iman away? What is going to take our faith away? What is going to put doubt in our hearts? What is going to make us to run? We're asking away from Allah and we're asking not for us, for us not to get fooled. That we can be sitting here and still be supporting tyranny. And Shah Fendi said, Sultan Alawliya said, if you have one drop, one drop, not two, not three, one drop of, let's say, you are tolerant, you are agreeing to them, one drop, their fire is going to reach to you. Their fire from Jahannam, they're going to reach to you. Yeah, still, they're not listening. What can we do? It's burning them, it's killing them. We're seeing every day, your light is being taken away. The nar is taking over your nur. You're becoming to look more dead. You used to look very alive. There is a shine that comes to you. Even if you are this or that color, this age or that age, it's still shining. I used to like, now I'm looking at you, you look like a dead body. Ah, because you are pulling. Who is making you to pull, shaitan? That's all. You're pulling the fire and it's overtaking, it's kicking up the nur. So what's the use now? You say, oh, I love you, Ya Rasulullah, I love you. And then you're sitting next to the tyrant. Huh? You're sitting next to the one who is oppressing and killing and massacring and putting bloodshed of the Muslims. What is that? Oh, oh, that's a show. Oh, people like show. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. Oh, you like to make show? Then you make a show. You can make a big show. Whole nation can be lining up, saluting to the relics of the Prophet You can make a big show about that. And those who are going to be fooled by show, they're going to be fooled by that too. But you're not going to fool the believers because they see with the nur, they look with the nur of Allah. So, so many. Now, they're going this side and that side. Some, they say, we're going to support we are supported by this nation. They are supporting Ahl Sunnah. Hmm. Now they are going to say, we are going to be in this part here, because this part here, it is supporting Sufism. Because the Ahl Sunnah also saying now, we are against Wahhabi. Hmm. To be against the Wahhabi, it's okay. We are together with the Shia also. 
those ones are going to curse at the wives of the Prophet, curse at the Sahabi Kiram. Okay, but who is supporting you? Those, they're not even believing in Allah. Hmm. So now where are we going to look? Don't look too much. Look to your own heart. You don't know too much. It's okay. Whatever you know, be sincere. Be in safety. So, it's going to be. I'm not telling people to stop celebrating. Celebrate. Imagine you have a family, you love your family. Then your family is entrusted with the people who say they love you. Before you know it, your whole family is slaughtered. But the people who say they love you is turning to you and to say, I love you. I love you so much. How are you going to feel? They say they love you, but you have entrusted your family to them. Who does the Prophet love? Alayhi salatu wasalam. His family, holy family. When he was born into this world, he says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa inni rasulullah. This is one of the miracles, first miracles that he showed because he was still a newborn infant and he was able to speak. There's only a handful of babies that were able to speak. One of them was Isa alayhi salam. That is the Quran that you don't have in the Bible. He was, what was, was he doing when he spoke? He was defending his mother. When Hazrati Maryam, she was just 12 years old. 12. She came back and she was commanded by Allah, don't speak, you are in seclusion, you cannot speak. And she brought the baby. And everyone is cursing at her, saying that you and your uncle, you see how dirty people are? The uncle is so holy man, they know that she is a holy girl because in the summertime, Allah is giving her fruits of winter. Things are magically, not magically, by karamat. Miracle, it is appearing to her when she was in seclusion. She knows nothing but the worship of Allah. They are accusing her uncle and her because of jealousy. She came back with a baby. And what did she do? She just pointed to the baby. She pointed. Some they're saying she pointed to the baby. Some they're saying the reason of her pointing is she's pointing up. She's doing the shahadat finger, saying la ilaha illallah. And the baby, Isa alayhi salam, spoke, saying, defending his mother. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, after declaring Allah as his Lord, Declaring himself as a prophet. Who was he calling out for? His family. Huh? You are saying, Ummati, Ummati. Oh, my nation, oh, my nation. And this was a prophet that did not make any distinction between Arab and non Arab. Show me one other prophet that made that distinction. That doesn't make that distinction. Show me which one. You understand? It is their shariat. They're saying, okay, now, like Yusha alayhi salam, belonging to the prophet of the Bani Israel, other people, they're there, they're not from the Bani Israel. It's ordered by Allah to completely wipe them out, kill them. Whereas his own nation, doesn't want to go to battle after 40 years of traveling. He's saying, ah, you go with your Allah first, see what happens, and then you come and you speak to us. 
how patient the prophets were also. But the Prophet he is not looking at your nationality. The way that Muslims now, they're looking at each other's nationality. He was saying, Ummati, Ummati. He was crying for his Ummat. So like that example I've given you, that Prophet now, he has left us, this Ummat. And how are we taking care of his Ummat? How are we taking care of the one that he loves so much that he says, my Ummat, whatever they do, if it is good, Allah will show it to me. And I will pray for them, I'll be happy. If they show me, if Allah, sh when Allah shows me the things that they have done that is bad, I will pray for them. This is revealed to me, he said. So how are we treating the one thing that the Prophet had so much love for? Now, if you know, we're not treating it properly. Especially those ones that they're so filled with love and they're smiling all the time. Yeah, they're smiling all the time. Subhanallah. They have so much love, they can even hug and kiss all those ones who hate the Prophet, hate Hazrat Abu Bakr, hate Hazrat Ali, hate everyone. They have so much more mercy than, of course, Prophet does. More mercy than Abu Bakr, more mercy than Umar, Usman and Ali. They definitely have. Those ones will be used. Don't be surprised later, they're going to be raised up as your Khalifa. So much tolerance and love. Why must you have tolerance and love for things that are evil? I don't understand. If you want to have tolerance and love, have tolerance and love for the things that are good, that is not familiar to you. Why you have tolerance and love for something that is evil, that everybody knows is evil. And those ones. Now is there a reason to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ? When you see all this tyranny that is happening, and you're not doing anything about it, you're not even saying, they cannot say. I dare them that they're calling tens of thousands of people, that they raise their hand and say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rasulullah, bring down the tyranny. Bring Mahdi alayhi salam. Bring back the Khalifa. I dare them to say that. They cannot say that. But they can command tens and thousands of people to make mawlid. Because who is supporting that kind of mawlid? Ah, the ones who wants to bring back Islam. Or the ones who wants to say Islam, keep it private religion. Private meaning... Uh, Shameful. You are ashamed. You know, that's why they call it privates, right? Private. Correct or no? Because you, are, you cover, you don't show. Since when Islam is like this? Yes, he needs another Hazrat Umar. Who said to the Prophet, aren't we on the way of Haq? Why we are hiding? Prophet <laughs> smiled because he was waiting for an Umar to appear. That is the permission and that is the power that is coming. And it says, now we are going to declare ourselves. And understand, when they declared themselves, it's not as if 10,000 angels came and they became completely strong and powerful. No, they had so much hardship because Allah is testing them too. So yes, we should gather. We should ask the Prophet ﷺ to forgive us, to give us more you know, heart and faith to take away tyranny from our hearts and tyranny from around us. No, they're not going to. They're going to say that privately now because they're listening to what I'm saying. They're listening very carefully. Seeing sometimes, say, why this person at high level? They're saying the same thing I'm saying, just couple of weeks after, oh, he's been listening. So they're going to say it too, but they're going to cover it up with so many things anyway. Because they cannot be in that position of power if their bosses are not giving them the permission. They are there because they're bosses, and their bosses are not liking Islam too much. Hmm. So for them to say something that their bosses are going to be upset, 
they're going to pull them down from that position. They cannot say. They will not say. They'd rather just be talking about the love and love and love and love. It's like I'm saying to you, you're saying, I love you, I love you to this man, yet his whole family, you've killed them, you've massacred them. Nah. But you say, I love you. May Allah forgive us. May Allah not have the hypocrisy to be in our hearts in these times. Hypocrisy. If we say we love the Prophet, we must love and protect and value what he loves. Who is doing that these days? He cannot. So those days of celebrating the birth, it's past. You know when it passed? It passed when the Hilafah, when the Khalifa stepped down, that passed. No more Mawlid from then on. From that time until now, there is only um, uh, uh, grieving and saying Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. There's only grieving. You gave us, but we betrayed you. You gave us, but we squander. There's no more celebrating. Khalifa finished. There's no more reason for celebrating. There must be a reason for us to step back and to think. We've fallen down. How we fell, we must get up again. We mean Allah who tafik al Fatiha. As much is enough. Stuff.